this part one video, I'll be talking all about IPA. What is IPA? Why do we need it? How is it useful? How do I learn it? The International Phonetic Alphabet, or the IPA for short, is a system that represents phonetic sounds with symbols. Ia, like Ia. Oi, oi. Royal, foil. Ah, ah. Mat, hand. Ooh, ooh. You, too. You too. Hello friends, I'm Akash, and today, in this part one video, I'll be talking all about IPA. What is IPA? Why do we need it? How is it useful? How do I learn it? These questions about the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA for short, will be answered in today's video. The International Phonetic Alphabet, or the IPA for short, is a system that represents phonetic sounds with symbols and helps us to pronounce a word correctly in any language. Many languages are phonetic, which means the pronunciation actually matches with the written form of the alphabet. Like for example, many Indian languages are phonetic. English is a non-phonetic language, which means the written form may or may not be the same as the spoken form. It means in English, a letter can have more than one sound. Therefore, a spelling of the word does not actually help us know the correct pronunciation of that word. For example, cough, tough, and dough. Although these three words have the same four-letter ending, O-U-G-H, it's pronounced differently in each of these words. And this is why we have IPA, to represent the sound of words. In IPA, every sound has a unique symbol, compared to English, where one sound, well, one letter, can make various sounds. Once you know IPA, you can look up oh, any word in the dictionary and instantly know how to pronounce it. Phonetic spelling is usually listed next to each word in the dictionary, which tells us how exactly each word is pronounced. As you see here, apple. This is how IPA spells apple, and this is the phonetic spelling of apple right here. British dictionaries, like Oxford or Cambridge, will use IPA to represent pronunciation of words. However, Merriam-Webster's dictionary from America uses a more simplified version of the IPA, using only letters of the English Roman alphabet and variations of them. For example, sh, well, sh, in place of this symbol, which actually represents the sound sh. This system is known as Merriam-Webster's diacritical marks, which I will be discussing in a separate video. Let's take an example word, say, apple. Now, if you look up the word apple in any regular dictionary, like Oxford or Cambridge, you'll see that they use IPA in their dictionaries, which represents apple like this. However, if you look up apple in Merriam-Webster, you'll notice they don't use IPA. They use their own diacritical marks, which instead writes out apple like this. Let's take another example. Let's go for sheep this time. This is how IPA says sheep compared to Merriam-Webster's diacritical marks, which turns that sh symbol into a plain sh. Take a look. Sheep in IPA is spelled with the I for the E sound and that special symbol for the sh sound. Same thing here with, you know, Merriam-Webster's diacritical marks, except 
that sh symbol is replaced with SH and of course there is an E with a line over it which means it makes its own sound E therefore sheep. A quick side note as English may or may not be spelled in the way how it is pronounced this gives the chance for misspelling a word and this is the reason why we have the spelling bee in English. To ask the simple question, what is the correct spelling of a certain word given the pronunciation? Coming back to the IPA, the English alphabet has 26 letters and you already know that. Five of them are vowels. One is considered both as a consonant and a vowel, that is Y and the remaining 20 of them are consonants. However, there are at least 40 unique sounds made out of these vowels, both short and long, diphthongs, and consonant sounds. On top of these 40 phonetic sounds, there are a few more only used in British English, and a couple others are used only in American English. Now, let's begin by looking into IPA vowel sounds. There are three types of vowel sounds represented by IPA. Short vowels, long vowels, and diphthongs. Let us take a look at the short vowels. I, I, as in fish, him. O, o, book, could, a, uh, a, uh, blood, duck, a, uh, a, uh, about, cinema, e, e, bed, head, a, uh, a, uh, mat, hand. And finally, er, er, word, girl. These are the short vowels. There's also one other one, which is all, as in stop. So now, let's recap and hear the short vowels once more. I, u, a, a, e, a, er, and ah. Now let's move on to long vowels. These include e, e, evening, leaf, oo, oo, you, tube, you tube, ah, ah, father, car, and finally all, all draw, taught. And that's all the long vowels, only four. By the way, there is, of course, an extra one used mostly in Britain and Australia, which is uh, as in, quick side note, I don't really have a good British accent, so I'll try my best. Go. Hope the accent was okay. So now, let's recap the long vowels. E, U, Ah and ah. Now let's take a look at the diphthongs, starting with I, I, light, fire, oi, oi, royal, foil, ow, ow, power, hour. A, A, weight, rate, O, O, yoke, cloak. These are the five diphthongs you need to know. I know there are a few British and Australian ones, such as Ia, like Ia, Ua, like tourist, O, like go, and finally, air, 
like there. So now, let's recap the five different diphthongs. I, oi, ow, a, and o. And now, we will move on to the IPA consonant sounds in the second part of the video. And you can find the link for the video in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that now you know a little bit about IPA. If you like my videos, please click on the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Thank you.